Uh, just a quick clarification. Uh, for this project group, you're going to have two main choices. And each of those two choices has two components. Uh, they could be considered entirely separate projects, those components. So that's kind of why I'm taking the time to explain this here. So you have two choices. So you could do the mascot or you could do the pattern. Uh, for both of them, you have to do the set of drawings before you get on the computer. And those set of drawings have to be rather polished and well done. Uh, and that's kind of what this little demonstration, or this, sorry, this little uh, lecture that's coming up here is going to explain. It's going to explain the, the drawings and what you need to do for those. Um, but after you do those, you'll take those drawings, you'll scan them, and you'll put them on the computer and just, yeah, like uh, play around with them and, and trace them in um, Illustrator. So again, you have two main choices. Just keep in mind that if you pick one of the drawings that you have to do the com computer component later for it, um, and you got to just keep that in mind. Even though you have a choice, you kind of lock yourself into a track here if you pick one of the two. Uh, so take a look maybe at the second half of this project in case you know you're going to want to do one over the other. Uh, all right. For this project, uh, you have two choices. Um, this is the first choice. Uh, uh, you're going to make a mascot. And before you start on the computer, I want you to make uh, 25 variations of your mascot. Um, uh, for the drawing itself, you need to do all those variations, hopefully on one sheet of paper. If not, you can split it if you need to. And then try to choose a theme or a mascot that maybe represents you as an artist, or you, you can redesign one that you like. It doesn't matter. Um, you have to make them kind of abstract or simplified, but each uh, variation should convey your, your mascot, its subject or its theme. Uh, apart from the group. So don't get so abstract we can't recognize what it is. Um, uh, I want you to use only black outlines for your drawings. Try not to shade anything. You'll do that in Illustrator. And then, of course, keep it school appropriate. Uh, the reason for this uh, project, or this uh, choice here, the mascot variations, and making a mascot is because um, it's a common thing, and uh, in graphic design, you're often asked to create variations or options for a client. So, you know, if somebody comes to you and you say, they say, all right, design uh, a mascot for us or a brand mascot for us, you know, and give us some options, that's, that's kind of something you're, you're asked to do quite often as a graphic designer. Um, here's some examples. Uh, think back to when you started drawing at the beginning of the year and you were simplifying symbols. Uh, this is along the same lines as that, except now you're doing more variations and it's a little bit um, more important because you'll be actually using these variations to uh, you know, create a digital version of them. Here's a great example of how to make your variations. This student chose a giraffe and they just made their giraffe using you know varying amounts of detail and sometimes they would use abstract shapes to create their giraffe. Uh, just just kind of have fun like they did and, and make a bunch of different wild crazy variations. Some more examples. Again, other options you can think about. Maybe you make uh, your variation using a different kind of like black media like ink or maybe you use a combination of different shapes together um, or use different marks or maybe you uh, don't draw the entire thing. Sometimes you can convey uh, a theme or a subject using only parts of it. Um, another thing that will happen when you make variations is sometimes you'll wind up with uh, something different than what you started with. So like this example here, they started with a peacock feather and ended up with a diamond. This is perfectly acceptable. If you suddenly change your mind and, you know, within your 25 variations there's a logical progression, um, I'll allow you to kind of change your idea in the process. Think back to um, also uh, what you think of as really simple, elegant symbols. Uh, something like a cross is a great example of that. You always recognize it as a cross. So long as they're intersecting lines, it's a cross. Um, uh, think in terms of that for your theme or your subject. Like if you pick a star, you know, all you really need is like five or four points and then it's going to look like a star no matter what you do. 
uh, another example of variations um, of a very recognizable symbol, the bat logo. All of these say Batman with uh, just subtle variations between each one. Um, obviously I want you to get a little bit further away from your, your starting point. Try not to be this uh, uh, subtle. When you're all done with your drawings, uh, they should be in black ink and you'll scan them and you'll pick one to be your actual mascot and you'll trace that into vectors and you'll give it color. So think in terms of kind of for a couple of your drawings as to what you're going to do on the computer later. So in this coming demo here, I'm just going to show you some things to think about while you're doing Alright, here is your second choice for this project. Um, you uh, will make a pattern for this second choice and before you start to make your pattern you need to draw the objects that you're going to trace uh, with your pen tool and make vectors in Illustrator. Um, I want you to do between 6 and 12 drawings and uh, each drawing should be very well made you know when you trace them in pen and ink make sure you use very crisp lines uh, each of your drawings should be of objects that kind of share like a central theme or fit in a group uh, hopefully you're making a pattern that has kind of a theme to it and uh, try to make your icons or your uh, your drawings uh, recognizable um, uh, most of the examples I've given here are of recognizable objects, so I kind of want you to stay away from abstract things. It's a little too easy to make it abstract, so try to draw something real. And um, yeah, here's some examples of what you could do. Uh, the one on the left is obviously everything to do with like uh, Sh Sherlock Holmes or crime or you know crime and punishment. Uh, the one on the right, you know, examples of like sports equipment. It can be uh, something simple, something you like, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, the rest of these examples here are just, you know, other things you can think about or Alright, so these are actual finished student examples of their patterns. Um, I don't have any examples of the drawings here, but uh, they would have probably drawn these before they um, started tracing them or used uh, other tools to kind of create something based on their drawings. So these are all student examples of finished products and I'll call back to these when I talk about making your uh, pattern in Illustrator. Uh, here's some other professional examples. Uh, the, the remaining slides here are just examples of what the pros would make and you know you, you could find these anywhere from uh, you know textiles used for making clothing to uh, you know stuff on backpacks maybe uh, the a phone case um, so you know patterns are still widely in demand and used an awful lot so this does have some real world application I'm just gonna walk you through uh, some some real brief uh, things you should consider when you're sketching out uh, anything for scanning and uh, using on your on the computer for Illustrator. Um, the reason I kind of want to show you this is because uh, a lot of times when you do the drawing really well, it'll save you a lot of time um, on the computer. So I'm going to start. I'm actually on a Using, I'm using sketchbook paper right now. This is my sketchbook. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, you know, it's a big old book. It's really too big to scan, so it's probably not the best paper to draw on. Uh, I highly recommend if you're just drawing, just scan it into a computer that you just draw on eight and a half by eleven, like regular old printer paper. I draw on that all the time, and it does the job just fine. Um, you can also use uh, tracing paper and there's a couple other regular drawing papers in um, the cabinets uh, behind my desk so like seven and nine have a ton of different kinds of paper in them and uh, you can always use those whenever you feel like it. Um, I also have sharpie markers in the class as well. Now these are my own uh, markers so uh, you may see a couple of special different kinds of markers here but I'm just going to use sharpies just to show how you can use the supplies we have at school to the best of their abilities. So uh, um, I'm just going to draw here a quick little pretzel. 
And uh, one thing kids kind of forget they can and can't do when sketching is with the pencil underlay, you can be as rough as you want. So like if I'm drawing a pretzel here, I don't have to make it look all that precise. Um, a lot of people think the pencil has to be this super tight thing and you know, you don't have to. You can just be an absolute like crazy mess here. And the reason for that is you're gonna go over it in marker. Now the reason I want you to get in the habit of markering or inking uh, your designs is because that will save you a lot of time on the computer. If you make your image a high contrast black and white image with really, really tight lines, it's super easy to use on the computer. Uh, it works better with live trace, it, it, it's easier to trace with the pen tool. Uh, there's less cleanup you have to do in Photoshop, there's just less you have to um, do to it to make it look good. So I got my pretzel here um, and I can start adding details. Now for thick lines you want to go straight to a sharpie, a, a broad tip, or they're called fine point, but they're, I call them broad tip. Oh, there we go. Um, and you want to make sure that you just sort of keep your line nice and crisp. Okay. Now a couple of things about keeping lines crisp. Um, the crisper they are, the better they uh, transform into vectors and the easier they are to kind of uh, trace. Okay. So a couple things you can do to ensure that. Don't let your marker stay in one place for too long. Don't let it bleed. So like if I hold my marker here and then I move it and then I let it hold there, I don't know if you can see that all too well. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, but you can see that there's a bleed right there. Uh, a bleed is any kind of large dot at the end of a stroke where the marker kind of like soaks into the paper. Uh, now these markers are kind of dried out so they're not really bleeding all too much, but if I get a newer marker here, you can really, really tell the bleed. Okay, see that little pudge right there? You don't want that pudge. Uh, you just want nice succinct lines, nice dark black lines. Um, you can use other markers of course to kind of clean up your edges though. Uh, and that's kind of what I use the fine points for. Okay, so let's say I'm done here. Uh, one thing you might want to consider doing, and I'll make a couple mistakes here just to kind of help you understand what you can do. Okay, so I've got some good lines on the right and some not so good lines over here and down here. Uh, go back with your smaller fine point marker, okay, and just use that to kind of clean up these lines. Get them as clean as you can before you bring them on the computer because that'll just save you a whole lot of time. And make sure your corners are nice and tight too. So I can go in there, I can take my fine point and I can make this more of a straight line, okay. Think about it transforming into a vector, okay. Whether you're using live trace or you're tracing it, you want to have a nice straight line. Um, doesn't matter what kind of fine point you use here. I'm going to switch to, I think, yeah, this one's a bit newer. Okay. The straighter it is, the easier it is to work with on the computer. Okay. And even if you, you know, start cleaning it up on the computer, it's just best to work with the line that's nice and straight. Okay. So make sure any mistakes you make, go over them, clean them up. Uh, it'll save you a lot of headaches and a lot of frustration later. So these lines over here, you know, even though it's a small bump, I want to curve that out. I want to make it nice and clean, okay? Doesn't matter if it gets off a little bit in thickness. You can always, again, take your vectors and individually kind of manipulate those lines. Again, think in terms of the computer. Think in terms of what the computer can do to lines. You know, you can make the stroke uh, wider or, or thinner depending on what you want. But you need to know what the general direction of that is and you want to smooth these lines out so you know that general direction. So let's say I'm happy with this. Um, before you scan it you're going to want to erase these pencil lines. And uh, it doesn't necessarily matter that they're super sloppy again because we went over it in ink so that kind of cleans everything up. Um, also before you erase I highly recommend you let the, the marker dry. I've made the mistake before of and especially depending on the paper you're using. I made the mistake of erasing before the ink is dry and smearing the ink, so make sure you do that. Um, and as I erase here, pencil comes out, and we're left with this nice, pristine, 
beautiful drawing. Now, sometimes pencil will hide little mistakes. So like here, that line's not quite connected. So I want to go back with a pen or a marker and just sort of clean that up, okay? And you can also tell if the line isn't smooth enough. Uh, so, you know, go back and obviously clean those up if the graphite was hiding that. You, the reason you don't want graphite to be a part of your scan is because it's gray, it's not black, so it doesn't really show up well. And uh, it's, it's not going to translate when you do live trace. It's not going to do you any good, really. I mean, it's, it's good for maybe just tracing straight with the pen tool, but if you're going to use live trace or other techniques, it's not the best. So when I scan this, uh, it'll be nice and crisp. Um, for your drawings for these projects, uh, make sure you do enough variations. Check the project criteria. And uh, make sure when you uh, find some drawings that you like in your series that you ink them really, really, really well. Uh, and ink several of them so that you have options.